Just doing great. Uh, did you ever cover that beautifully? Should I get right into my Madison ad? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Tommy. We'll talk to you on, the, on Monday. Uh, and a happy Good Friday to you, yeah, you too. too. You too. Hey, by the way, speaking of happy, yeah, I understand it's a big day uh, for Mr. It's your birthday today. It is. Happy birthday, Tommy. Well, thank you very much. Any big plans or what? Well, I have big plans. Uh, my son and grandson are going to hook up with me in San Jose tonight. And we're going to go out and uh, have a nice little dinner together. And yeah. That should be a lot of fun. I always enjoy, of course, getting together with family. And uh, when the uh, family lives uh, in California, I don't get to see them that often. So I really uh, welcome the opportunity to have a nice visit. And, of course, traditionally, Shorty bakes you a cake. And, uh, oh, Shorty's terrific. Yeah. <laughs> hey, speaking of a cake, uh, wasn't that nice? Uh, uh, the people at Orca Bay uh, sent over a nice birthday cake with ay 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 on it. Uh, without the <laughs> candles, of course. There wasn't room for those. Uh, but we, uh, we had a nice little pre-birthday celebration up in the booth last night. Everybody enjoyed a piece of cake. It was delicious. And... Uh, it was made by Chris uh, Brumwell's wife, uh, who does a great job uh, doing birthday cakes, wedding cakes, and that type of thing. So uh, if I can, I'll send along a special thank you to her, too. So it's your birthday. It's a holiday. We're going to make you work anyway. Sure. What did you think of that game last night? Well, I was disappointed. Uh, I was disappointed for a couple of reasons. Um, I was disappointed uh, with the effort. Uh, I thought the Canucks would really be charged up to uh, secure uh, the division title. Uh, third spot at least in the seedings for the playoffs come next week. Uh, and it was fan appreciation night, the last regular season home game. Uh, so many things that uh, I think uh, were important uh, to this hockey team, this hockey franchise, and to the hockey fans who have supported this team uh, tremendously uh, for so many years. And, of course, uh, sellout after sellout after sellout. So it was disappointing from that uh, standpoint. Uh, uh, it really was. Uh, we knew that the Avalanche, we talked about it yesterday, they were going to play this game like it was the seventh game of the Stanley Cup final. It, I mean, they can't afford to lose. They know they can't lose or they're out. And uh, they played like a team like that. The urgency was there. Uh, they were crisp. They were sharp. Uh, they two to one at least in scoring chances. And uh, Hey Duke set the tone 25 seconds into the game. Uh, I know that the coach was critical of uh, Henrik uh, losing the puck in the neutral zone, but uh, I thought Willie Mitchell was extremely so slow to react to the puck. I thought he could have got to it first before Hayduke, and then when he didn't, he let him cut right inside him, go by him, and then snap that great shot. But wasn't Hayduke ever great mm -hmm. last night? You know, every time he scores a goal against the Canucks, Tommy, you, I can just I hear your voice <laughs> in my head, Canuck killer! Yeah, that's one of my lines. It uh, is. You know, but it's so true. Uh, the guy has just been deadly. Uh, I saw where he saw, uh, said in the paper that, uh, yeah, I used to score. They weren't very good in those days. They're a much better team now. So he, I think he really cherished the fact that he was able to uh, uh, score the hat trick last night. I think that's the first hat trick against the Canucks. I haven't looked it up, but I think it's the first hat trick uh, by any opponent uh, against Vancouver this year. Uh, I know they lost the game 6 nothing in Nashville. I can't remember if someone got a hat trick in that game or not because most of their games have been you know, pretty low scoring yeah. anyway, uh, one goal uh, differences and so on. So I don't think uh, anybody else has um, registered a hat trick against the Canucks, but Hayduke just certainly deserved that. Can you believe 10 shots? I know. Well, it wasn't like he got three fluky goals or Scott's lucky. I mean, he was all over the ice. 10 it, shots. You're right. That's remarkable. This is what I always love about goal scorers. Goal scorers find a way to shoot the puck. They really do. And 10 shots uh, tells you the story right there. Hey, Duke has won a Rocket Richard trophy. Uh, this guy knows what to do with the puck. Pinpoint accuracy. Uh, it, just fabulous. I, I, I thought he was a real treat to watch last night. Uh, Tom, I wanted to ask you about the way Colorado played the Sedins, and I noticed last night watching the game yeah. that the Avs were allowed to get away with a lot more of that subtle clutching and grabbing, stick between the leg stuff. Punching and, behind the head. Yeah, and hey, the refs let it go, and if they're going to let it go, that's an effective way to play them. But is that a concern going into the playoffs, that the standard of officiating may be at that level, and are the scenes going to have to be prepared to fight through that stuff? Well, they're going to have to fight through it. Uh, I think every team's going to bang them. I mean, that's the way, uh, if there's any way to stop the Sedins, uh, you have to be physical with them. And uh, the Avalanche, I think, uh, probably uh, were as physical and as effective uh, as any team we've seen play the Sedins this year. I don't think the Sedins were particularly sharp last night, quite honestly. I think their little passes, uh, you know, those little saucer passes mm -hmm. that they do, uh, 
they weren't quite on last night. Uh, they were trying to force pucks at times. Uh, I thought uh, because uh, they're getting banged on and everybody was collapsing on them, uh, they didn't see that the points were wide open. Uh, you know, sometimes instead of looking for those plays down low, you've got to change it up a little bit uh, to back those people off. So I, I think the Sedins can work on a few things before the playoffs start because they're going to get extra special attention. And why shouldn't they? I mean, they're great players. Tom Larshide, the Larshide Report on the Team 1040. Henrik had that one rush where he split the D and got Wasn't a great chance. Nice? Yeah, beautiful. And what a move. But uh, there, were, there weren't many opportunities for the Sedins no, last night. No, there weren't. And, uh, you know, it, it just gets back that uh, the Avalanche had the puck all night. Mm-hmm. The Canucks were chasing. And uh, when that happens, uh, it's going to really be tough, uh, tough to win. Uh, but uh, now there's two games left. Uh, they put themselves in a bit of a pickle, don't they? Yeah, they do. They go down to San Jose. Now, what do you do here? Uh, you know, do you play Danny Sabrin? I-, I haven't heard anything yet. I'm just talking out loud to you. Do you play Danny Sabrin tonight uh, and hope that the Canucks can get the job done with him? Or, uh, or do you save it now uh, for Luongo to play against Phoenix on Sunday? Uh, yeah, you know, you almost feel that Danny Sabrin should have a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to, to, you know, kind of sharpen his game a little bit. You never know what can happen in the playoffs, uh, God forbid. But uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, if they fail to get the job done tomorrow night, uh, you, you pretty much have to come back with Luongo. I mean, you want to secure it, unless, of course, St. Louis knocks off Minnesota, and then yeah. that puts them in. But that, that, that would be a real nice Easter present, wouldn't it? Absolutely, but that Phoenix game on Sunday isn't a gimme. That's going to be three and four nights and four and six, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, you're Canucks. right. Oh, it's not. There aren't any gimmies. Yeah, yeah. We talk about that all the time. There aren't any gimmies. The closest thing to a gimme is to play Edmonton. <laughs> Right, uh, you're right, and, and and Colorado hopes that trend uh, changes because the Oilers play Calgary tomorrow night, and the Avs need a a win to give them a, a chance to to sneak into the playoffs. If they get in by some miracle, Tom, uh, I think Colorado's a dangerous team the way they're rolling right now. Oh, amen to that. Oh, would they ever be tough for uh, Detroit right off the get go? Yep, to have to go in, and that's been a great rivalry over the years, as you know, uh, the Red Wings against the Avalanche. Uh, that that would disappoint me. Uh, I'd love to see that. Uh, Colorado's playing great right now. You're right. Uh, you know, I just still think they're going to run out of games. Uh, but, you know, talking about Edmonton, Calgary, I mean, Edmonton, wouldn't they dearly love to knock the flames off? You got that right. I mean, it's the battle of Alberta. They, they, they really have been the laughing stock of the league for the last six weeks. Uh, a chance to at least to hold their head high for the summer vacation. Uh, so, you know, Calgary, uh, it's, it's not going to be a slam dunk for them. 